Hello beautiful bookworm friends, welcome back to my channel today. I'm doing my February and March wrap up. <laughs> so I've been away for a while and that's because um, it's been really busy with the work and I decided that for March I wasn't going to film anything because I was not organised in March. I was trying to organise myself, but I decided, you know what, we'll start in April. So then everything's sorted. Now, hopefully, now that I've managed to think through, you know, future videos that I'm going to make, that I'm more organised and there should be videos coming out on Mondays and Fridays. Hopefully. I'm not promising anything. <laughs> In the month of February I read two books and in March I also read two books. I haven't been that productive when it comes to reading and that's because my timetable has changed. I don't read during the day anymore, well I do, but not as much as I did before. And in the evening I don't read that much either because I would just, I'm just too tired and I fall asleep. But trains in the morning and trains in the afternoon is sort of my reading time so I get what 45 minutes each way so about an hour and a half and probably an hour before going to sleep but anyway let's get on with my wrap up so the first book I read in the month of February was As All This Time A Twisted Tale by Les Braswell and I gave this book 3 out of 5 stars. I made a review video on this a month ago and um, if you want to check that out I will leave the links down below in the description box. So this book is a retelling of Beauty and the Beast and is published by Disney Press. It follows the 1991 animated movie quite closely at the beginning. I would say 30% of the book is the movie. Ultimately I think Think that's the reason why I'm so conflicted with this book because on the one hand I really really enjoyed the idea of the Enchantress being Belle's mother, I loved the addition of the magical people, that history, the Enchantress's relationship with Maurice, the way Maurice is portrayed in this book. It was just so great. I felt that the book has opened up Beauty and the Beast's world um, widely and that's quite exciting for me but because the book followed the movie quite closely I was expecting that it would end the way the movie did but it didn't. The thing that captivated me in the movie was the breaking of the curse, the beast transforming into the prince and you know that that was the magic for me and that got a bit ruined by this book because that didn't happen. Essentially the book is a retelling of Beauty and the Beast but it doesn't focus on the relationship between Beauty and the Beast. It um, focuses on the relationship between non-magical and magical people as Enchantress as well and Maurice's life with the Enchantress and so on. So in a way I understand the ending now and in, in some ways I do feel that the ending of this book is not as bad as I thought it was <laughs> but at the same time I can't really change my mind about the fact that you know it shouldn't have followed the movie I just didn't like the fact that you know she was following the movie so technically the characters are made for her and then she tries to make it her own and so essentially changing the characters and I'm thinking that's not how they you know they acted in the movie so I just kept really comparing the book to the movie and that's not what you really want when it comes to the you know to your book um it would have been a lovely book if it got rid of the movie aspect of it so yeah the second book i read in the month of february was the help by katherine stockett oh the glare i'm so sorry i gave this book four out of five stars i really really enjoyed reading it i watched the movie a few years ago and reading this just it was just much better. You now they say books are much better than movies. Well, it applies to this because the book is brilliant. I love this book because in some ways it gave women a voice, particularly black women. When we watch movies, for instance, civil rights movies. It's always men that stars. So, for instance, Selma. And for me, that was quite refreshing, even though this book is technically fiction. But it's based on everyday life, how they were treated and how they can't really do anything about it. The case of Minnie for instance, you know, I mean she is sassy but she had a fair share of bad treatments from her employ employers um, and then when she gets back home, you know, she gets 
beaten up by her husband and she has to look after her kids so as I said it's the struggle of being a woman but at the same time struggling of being a black woman and in the month of March I first read of Beast and Beauty by Stacey J and I gave this book 3.5 out of 5 stars and it is a retelling of Beauty and the Beast I was trying to read as much retelling as I could before the movie before I watched the movie and I did watch the movie and I loved it I might do a review on that I really enjoyed the author's writing it was just really really beautiful that's the thing that really made me read on it wasn't necessarily a Beauty and the Beast retelling. It resembles Romeo and Juliet because, you know, they're star-crossed lovers. The Beast is from a different place. He's from the desert and he has his own people. Everyone from the Dome City where this, you know, the Juliet, <laughs> her name's not Juliet, but where the princess lives or the lady protagonist they're sort of scared of these desert um, people because they look like monsters. But the thing I really, really like about this book is the use of the roses or the way the roses are portrayed. The roses are um, a symbol of evil. Yeah, they are in a way monstrous themselves, um, the roses, because we always see the roses as a symbol of romance hearts and roses basically and then in this book it was portrayed as monstrous. I love the characters in a turmoil, how they developed really and how they trusted each other because at the beginning they were not able to trust each other because of the things that they were told um, but then they realized for themselves that this is not true whatever they knew about each other was not true and they tried to fight it they tried to fight what what they know to what they were told they were trying to reconcile it and I, that's what I really like um them coming to the rea realization that you know whatever they were thinking of each other was not true um and that you know essentially they liked each other as friends ultimately they become friends and then lovers <laughs> but yeah um I really enjoyed that about this book lastly I read Born a Crime by Trevor Noah and I give this book 5 out of 5 stars. This book was amazing. I enjoyed it so much. This is an autobiography by Trevor Noah. If you guys don't know who Trevor Noah is, he is the host of The Daily Show. I love that show. I've, I've been watching that on YouTube. He is a stand-up comedian. Um, he's from South Africa and this book is about his life growing up in South Africa. Trevor Noah was born to a white father so his father was Swiss and his mother was black from South Africa and he's literally born a crime because he was born during apartheid and sexual really or any relationship really um, between a black person and a white person was not condoned it was against the law. This book was very informative with regards to apartheid. I've not really learned um, a lot about um, South Africa, especially apartheid, but Trevor Noah gives context. There are bits that are really, really funny, um, and there are also bits that were very moving because this not only talks about his life, but he also talks about his mother. And in some ways, um, I've been following his interviews with regards to his book, and he's always said that he didn't set out to write this book have the focus to be his mother because in this story a lot of it was him and his mom and he realized i guess whilst he was writing this that so many of his like how he thinks and his ideals have come from his mother anyway guys that is it for me for today i hope you like this video oh look at that it's dark outside when I started this video, the sun was still up. <laughs> oh, where does the time go? Today, I hope you like this video. And I will see you guys on Friday. Hopefully. Fingers crossed. <laughs> anyway, guys. I shall see you soon. Bye-bye.